Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem receivable 03. In this one, you're going to have to calculate the bad debt estimation using the percent of receivables method. So here we go. Blue Devil Inc.'s accounting system shows the below information related to customer sales and receivables. Record Blue Devil Inc.'s journal entry for its bad debt estimation at period end, assuming 10% of receivables is the estimation basis. So take a moment, pause the video, see if you can figure out the journal entry, and really it's, it's the value that is the challenge here, not the journal entry itself. But see if you can figure out what that's gonna look like. Come on back when you're ready, and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here's the deal. Whenever we are going to estimate bad debts based on a percent of receivables, we first have to know how much do we actually have in receivables um, when the period comes to an end. So to do that, typically the easiest way is to go ahead and establish an AR ledger. And so I'm gonna start there. So here's my ledger, AR. Notice my first piece of information, beginning AR was 150,000. Since this is an asset, that's gonna be on the debit side. So we've used this piece of information. I'm just gonna scratch out as we go. Um, the next information we have is beginning allowance for doubtful accounts. Well, we don't need that to come up with our AR balance, so we can just ignore that for now. We had credit sales of 225. Credit sales make your AR go up. And so we're going to go ahead and scratch that out. Now notice the next one, cash sales of 175. That is a detractor. Cash sales are irrelevant from um, a an, an, uh, percent of receivables estimation standpoint, from an AR standpoint, because if you sell something for cash, there never is a receivable to start with. And so we're gonna just scratch that out. Next up, customer collections. So that's collections of AR that customers owe you, so that makes AR go down. All right, we're gonna scratch that out. And then the next two, write-offs and recoveries. So when you write off an account, you take the AR away. So that also makes AR go down. Now, I'm going to, uh, I guess what I'll do for this one is I'm just going to put a little check next to it because we used it for AR. But AR is not the only thing affected by write-off. So I don't want to scratch this one out yet. And then notice next up, a recovery. Now, recoveries actually have a, a net zero impact to AR because they impact AR from both directions. And so what I mean by that is when you recover an account, what that means is part of that write-off ends up getting paid. Well, in order to collect the money, you first have to undo the write-off and put the AR back on the book, so debit AR. But then because you're getting paid, the AR is going to come right back off the books, and you'll see that those two impacts cancel each other out. Um, once again, I'm just going to put a check mark next to that because AR is not the only thing impacted by recoveries, so I don't want to totally scratch it out yet. All right, so that's it for my AR account. If I go ahead and put a total line there, I'll extend this down. We need to do some math on this one, so I'm going to pull out my calculator. 150,000 plus 225,000, scoot this over, minus 275,000, uh, minus 8,000, and I can just ignore the 2,000s because they cancel each other out. So it looks like I have 92,000 as the ending balance in my AR account. Now again, why did I need that information? Well, we are using 10% of receivables as our estimate for bad debts. So at this point, we take that 92,000 that we end our AR with, we take 10% of that, and that means $9,200 is my estimated bad debts as a proportion of my AR balance. Here's where I often see students make a mistake if they're not too familiar with how to properly calculate um, percent of receivables, um, bad debt amounts, at least from a journal entry perspective. We know that we have 9,200 of our AR that we expect not to collect. And so often what I see students do at this point is I say, well, when you estimate your bad debts, what you're essentially doing is you are um, creating an allowance for those bad debts. So you credit allowance for doubtful accounts, 9,200, and anytime you essentially make your allowance go up, you've got to put a corresponding expense on the income statement called bad debt expense. 
And so, like I said, I'll, I'll see students do this typically, and this is actually a mistake because that $9,200, yes, that is the allowance for doubtful accounts that we need in this company. That does not mean that that is what we actually need to record in a journal entry at this time. And so I'm gonna go ahead and erase these numbers. And what I'm gonna do instead of using that 9,200 in my journal entry is I'm gonna say, well, that's the allowance I need when the period's over. So just like I did with AR, I'm gonna create a ledger. This ledger is for the allowance. Okay, so allowance for DA. All right, and what I'm essentially saying is I need that allowance to be at $9,200 at the end of the period. Now, notice I put this on the credit side because allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset, and so contra assets have credit balances. The question is, how much do I actually need to record in order to get to that $9,200 ending balance? And what that's gonna require me to do is to fill out the rest of the allowance for doubtful accounts ledger. Notice we were given the beginning allowance for doubtful accounts balance, 15,000. All right, I can scratch that out. And remember, I mentioned the write-offs and recoveries um, uh, later on. I said, I said, um, you know, I'm just not, I'm not going to scratch these out because they affect other accounts. Well, specifically, they both affect the allowance account. When you write off a customer's account, not only do you take the AR away, but you also reduce the allowance because that is no longer an estimate that you need. That came true, and so that reduces allowance for doubtful accounts. So we've used that now, I'll scratch it out. When you subsequently recover something that was previously written off, not only do you initially put the, the AR back on the books, but you're gonna put the allowance back on the books as well, because if it turns out that you never truly wrote off that account, like it ended up getting paid, well that means you still need that estimation for whatever other account you think won't get paid later. And so the allowance goes back on the books. At this point, we've used all the given information, and we need to ask ourselves if we were to simply subtotal where the allowance is now, and so I'm just going to put a little dash, or write sub for subtotal. We had 15,000. We took out eight. That brings it down to 7,000. We added two back. That brings it to 9,000. So our subtotal is a 9,000 credit balance. Right, that was just 15 minus eight plus two. We need to get to 9,200, so what that is going to require of us is a $200 additional credit to the allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm just getting that, that's a plug that I'm getting by taking the difference between where we need to be and where we are, and therefore that is the amount of the journal entry that we need to record. Credit allowance for doubtful accounts, 200. Expense it through the income statement, bad debt expense, also 200, okay? Now, I am gonna hit you with one deviation on this problem. And so what I'm gonna do is I am going to copy everything we have here, and I'm gonna take us to the next slide. And here I'm going to paste, I'm going to put all that where it goes. All right. Now, on this slide, it looks nearly identical, but there is one thing that changed from the slide before it, and that's what you see here, customer collections. Every other number on here is identical to what we dealt with before, except for customer collections. Instead of 275 from the prior slide, they are now 300,000 on this slide. But what you're going to see is that's going to have a significant ripple effect because, here, let me go ahead and get this sub out of here. Let me get this plug out of here. Let me get these totals out of here. And let's change the one thing that changed in this problem. Instead of 275 collections, we have 300,000 in collections. Like I said, all the other information is still the same. So the rest of it would fall into place just as it did before. All right. In this case, if I bring out my calculator, we had 150,000 in AR plus 225 in AR minus 300,000 
minus 8,000. And again, we don't have to deal with the 2,000s because they're offsetting. That gives us AR of 67,000. If we estimate that 10% of our AR is uncollectible, that means we need 6,700 in our allowance account. But notice, and I shouldn't have raised the sub. I don't know why I did. The sub is still the same, 9,000 credit. Notice we have more than we need, right? We're at $9,000 already in the allowance account. We only need 6,700. So in this case, we are actually going to take some allowance away. Specifically, we're going to take 2,300 of it away by debiting allowance, 2,300. So plug. So if we take 2,300 away, 9,000 minus 2 is 7,000 minus another 300 gets us to 6,700. So notice this is just working out the math between the sub and where we need to be. But notice we're debiting allowance, so our journal entry in this case is actually going to flip. Allowance will be the debit, bad debt expense will be the credit, a rare instance where you're actually going to credit an expense account for $2,300. Now, we're debiting allowance because that's what we need to do to get allowance where it needs to be. What's happening here is we had overestimated previously and now we're basically correcting the overestimation. Well, remember, when we estimated previously, we would have debited bad debt expense. Well, now as part of correcting the overestimation, we're undoing some of that prior bad debt expense. So that's the reason that you see this. It's just something to keep an eye on, that your journal entry, when you're estimating your bad debts, it can flip the other way if you've previously overestimated your bad debt expense, okay? That's it for this one. I kind of threw it all at you. It's pretty tricky, but once you get the hang of it, they all kind of go the same way. Anytime you see one of these problems, it's kind of rinse and repeat. Make your T accounts, plug all your information, solve for ending AR, take a percentage, plug that as ending allowance, figure out the difference you need. That's your journal entry number. Rinse and repeat for every time you see a practice problem of this nature. So with that said, I hope you found this helpful. Hope you join me for another.